I can't finish without mentioning one project that we did together uh, about five years ago called The Englishman's Boy. And in this project, I played a very screwed up guy who liked nothing better than to kill blacks and First Nations people. And you played the wife of the chief. And there was a, there was a scene, um, I remember, that was very horrific, which was the killing. And you had a shot that drove our feet to the ground. We could not, even while I was off camera, I was shaken by what you were doing on camera. And it was simply you seeing the chief, your husband, being taken aside, and I'm about to slice his tendons and put a bullet through his back. And something came out of you as you ran from behind and ran towards the scene that rooted me to the ground. Speaking to you now, I sort of understand a little bit more where that came from. But were you not frustrated having a small part in a huge story that's so centered upon the massacre of Assiniboine people? That's the story of my life. <laughs> You know, there's no small roles, there's only small actors or something like that. And, and that's what I was asked to do. And uh, I, I was only on camera for a very s short period of time, same like Black Robe. My only close-up was the arrow through the neck. If you look at the movie, that was my only close-up, right. eh? Right. And to me, it's, it's a sacred duty. To, to try to get it as, as real, to live that experience because people live that experience. And I want to live it as best I can because that's the power of it. It may get into some dead molecule somewhere. It might wake up some cell somewhere and it might start a chain reaction of remembery. Um, I did some uh, this this <laughs> this series called Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. It was uh, for me. It was horrific. Um, that was a very 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 hard uh, job. But I remember when I went for the audition. It was a clear sky in L.A., and you take note of things like that, right? It was just blue as could be, and I I looked up. Uh, above the door of this place that I was going to audition and there was this perfect white plume. It was a cloud, right? And it just looked like a, a white plume. Beautiful feather. Intricate. And I took that as a sign that this was going to be a fabulous experience. So I kind of had a sense, okay, I get this role, it's going to be good. So I get the role, and oh, it was horrible. Why was it horrible? It was horrible. I mean, you know, the whole, there was a certain attitude on the part of certain people that it was, just remember that you are lesser, that you are lower. Just remember. And um, so there was a lot of that kind of uh, stuff and, and just, you got to work through it. You got to work through it, which I did. And then I was never so happy to mass be massacred in my entire career. <laughs> so I was done. Okay. And then sometime later, I get, you know, fan letters come and I get this three page letter from a woman who just laid it all out that all through her school years, whenever she heard about Indians being massacred and what's happened to Indian people, it never bothered her, never touched her, didn't mean a thing. And, but with that series, she came to know us as human beings, as characters, and, and she, she really appreciated us, and it just tore her up when we were massacred. And she said she cried and cried. She was in mourning 
for about three days, three, four days. Because not only were the people that she had come to care for, but all of those massacres, things that had happened through history that she had ignored, it all came back to her. And so she was affected from a long ways from that little homely little piece of television. You know, so who am I to say if I'm put in that place Mm -hmm. to do that, then do it to the best of my ability.